expert boners go to work boning out the quarters. Each quarter taking approximately three minutes to bone out. The meat passes along the table to the packers and the bones exit via the bone chute to land in the waiting bone trailer. From outside, an air curtain is visible over the bone chute. This air curtain produces an air barrier that prevents flies and other insects entering the bone room. Whoops, missed. The bone trailer is now full and departs for the dump. Crows look down on the dump over the remains of 13,600 buffalo. These bones will soon be burned and vegetables grown in the enriched soil. A bush aboriginal approaches the plant to ask for meat. One of the men obliges and the Aboriginal then walks a short distance away from the camp before stopping to prepare his meal. Aboriginals often place leaves between the coals and the meat they are cooking. Apart from preventing the meat from burning, they claim it adds flavour. Back in the boning room, the packers are busy packing the meat into cartons. This is a very critical phase of the operation as the senior packer also fills the position of quality controller and gives the product a final inspection. Each carton weighs 60 pounds net and 64 pounds gross. To prevent damage through moisture, the actual cartons are waxed inside and out and fitted with leak-proof plastic liners. To complete the process, securing wires are placed around the cartons. The cartons are then placed in the blast freezer adjoining the boning room where they will be a rock hard 18 degrees Fahrenheit inside of six hours. One of the trucks backs in for loading. The plant storage capacity for frozen product is 80 tonnes. 10 to 12 tonnes of boneless meat is produced daily. So it is critical that the trucks arrive on time to prevent hold-ups occurring. The loading goes smoothly, with each carton being carefully marked and counted. It is also necessary to check each carton for damage, as damaged cartons cannot be exported.
Now the loading is completed and the truck pulls away from the freezers. The container is closed by my father. It will not be reopened until it reaches its destination Adelaide, about 2,500 miles away. The truck will then take on supplies and head back. Only one single driver will guide that faithful Mack truck on its long return journey. It's a tiring and demanding job with heavy responsibilities. We have now viewed the entire cycle from shooting to the shipping of the finished product. Now let's return to the field for some more action shots. Top priorities of the day are a little laundry and of course a shave. Meanwhile, Dave ensures that his feet are in a spotless condition. This is followed by a quick snack, consisting mainly of buffalo steak and vegetables. With a paper bark tree as a not very comfortable seat, and a cormorant watches from his vantage point. A two and three quarter by 90 Weatherby scope fitted with a medium crosshair mounted on a totally reliable Ruger Model 77 goes back into action. Day after day and week after week this incredible combination never once failed to perform faultlessly. Shooting and loading continues day after day and the entire operation's success rests on the rifle and its user. From experience, I found it best to retire a rifle every thousand buffalo shot. Allowing for extra shots fired, zeroing the rifle, shooting small game for the camp such as ducks and turkeys and dispatching vermin this related to about 1,500 shots per rifle. Very few factory rifles can be taken straight from the box, adjusted under field conditions, and deliver the sort of performance Model 77s consistently did on my operations. Because their working lives were extremely short, usually only about 14 days, they receive virtually no cleaning with the exception of the occasional squirt of WD-40. Such rifles were certainly not shot out, but I am always on the conservative side and retire them early. On one reliability test, 3,500 buffalo were taken with a single Model 77. 
it was re-zeroed and the screws checked every 500 buffalo shot and it was cleaned only twice by being totally immersed in a 55 gallon barrel of gasoline wiped dry and squirted with WD-40. Standard NATO factory full metal jacket ammunition was used as usual. Ruger Model 77s have not let me down ever. I have found the trigger systems to be easily adjusted and very usable, as the results recorded in this film clearly testify. Careful zeroing is time-consuming and requires much care. However, it is a must and must be done meticulously and regularly. These are fine old bulls and there are very many of them. They show little fear of the hunter. Some were so old that they even had 50 caliber projectiles in them as souvenirs collected when fighter pilots used them for target practice during the Second World War. That practice, by the way, raised a storm of protests and was soon stopped. Sharp knives are essential, and proper sharpening is an art. Tricky methods are sometimes needed to get those last buff up onto an extra large load. don't always fall in the best places. Sometimes it's necessary to drag a buff out to a more convenient loading place. Dead meat cannot be bruised, but friction can burn meat. If a body is left more than 8 to 10 minutes on the ground, the underside of the animal can be partly cooked by the hot ground and the meat spoiled, so they must be loaded quickly. Sometimes it is necessary to shoot across creeks. Then of course comes the difficulties of getting across and getting back.
Occasionally wounded buff had to be dealt with. I found the best method was to get as close as possible, as quickly as possible and dispatch the animal with the utmost speed. Once back on the right side of the creek, the buffalo already dragged to the far side must be brought across. A certain amount of entertainment can be had if this task is approached with a little careful planning. We jokingly used to call this our Buffalo Rodeo. Not all riders lasted the distance, and some even got a little messy. Every year thousands of square miles are burned off. This allows drivers to see rocks and other obstructions and causes a succulent regrowth of natural grasses which attract buffalo for miles around. That of course helps make the hunter's job a little easier. Finding 60 to 75 shootable animals every day is no easy task. It was necessary to constantly consult with the Aboriginal landowners to ensure tribal customs and sacred sites were respected. I was most privileged to be made a full tribal member with the tribal name of Womit. Breakdowns such as this trailer bearing do occur and the necessary parts had to be carried to ensure that the load was quickly on its way again. Hide preparation is a long and arduous task that must be performed meticulously if top quality hides are to be produced. First the hides are fleshed. and then salted, and then at exactly the precise moment of drying out, folded. If the hides dry too much, they become as hard as iron and cannot be folded. Finally, more salt is added and the hides are stacked in preparation for shipping. Maintenance is never ending and must be attended to at the plant as there are no workshops for hundreds of miles. This includes taking care of our own refrigeration, generators,
electric power supply. And of course, all mechanical. And vehicle servicing needs. This is Aboriginal tribal country and from time to time we encounter a tribesman going about his daily business. Termites are considered good tucker. Hunting is an everyday task, as food needs must be met. and pandanus nuts are gathered for grinding into a kind of flour. Wild honeybees are tracked to their hives, where their hives are robbed. These bees do not sting and make no honeycomb. The honey provides the only sweet natural food in the Aboriginal's diet. As the shadows grow long and sundown draws near, two more loads are needed to fill the day's quota. It is always a relief to locate sufficient bulls for these last loads. Before hurrying off to seek the final load for the day, Darwin's outpost radio must be contacted to check for messages. Although I have no traffic to send, checking in is expected, and it is a means of letting the radio operator and any friends listening in know that all is well. Now it's off to shoot the last load. Luck is with us, and we quickly locate enough bulls. At the plant, the day's last buffalo is lifted from the trailer. A new day has arrived and some of the crew are enjoying a very well-earned rest. Meanwhile, the others are busy as they have a variety of chores that must be attended to before departing for a short break in town. Because the Aztec has limited seating, the men must alternate each break. Half go to town and half must remain in the camp. The Aztec has been pushed out from under its shelter and the men arrive in good spirits.
A daily inspection of the aircraft is performed. The windows are cleaned and we climb aboard. The 250 horsepower Lycomings come readily to life. We taxi out through the red dust and are soon roaring down the runway. The aircraft's call sign, MPE, named after my three children, Mark, Paul and Elizabeth, is easily visible on the wing. The swamp near the plant, from which we took over 2,000 buffalo in the first season, lies directly below. with the red airstrip visible in the distance. As we turn overhead the plant and set course, I radio our flight plan to air traffic control. En route to Darwin, we make a brief stop at the small township of Catherine to drop off two of our men who live there. Departing Catherine, we pass over the famous Catherine Gorge then over the endless coastal swamp plains where the movie Crocodile Dundee was filmed. The number and varieties of bird and animal life on these plains is truly incredible. Fringing the plains are dense paper bark swamps that cover thousands of square miles. An occasional crocodile is sighted basking in the sun. This is the home of the world's largest crocodiles. Finally, we arrive back at Darwin and look down at the city, which is destined to be totally destroyed on Christmas Day 1974 by Cyclone Tracy. As the Aztec touches down on runway 36 and rolls through to turn and taxi to the holding area, everyone is looking forward to a short, well-earned rest.